Hello my friend, welcome to another video. Today we talk about the Fibonacci sequence. You probably already know what I'm talking about because every computer science student in this planet knows about Fibonacci. Well, you stumble upon this sequence of numbers once you have to study recursion, right? Why is that? Well, because this series has a fancy characteristic. Long story short, we have that every number is basically the sum of the previous two numbers. The LDR, we have 5, which is the sum of 2 plus 3. 13 is the sum of 5 plus 8. And you got the gist of it. Today, I propose to you some solutions in C. The first solution I propose is the classic recursive one, which is a naive one. Why is that? Well, because performance-wise, it sucks. Basically, here I have the ternary operator, which in my opinion is pretty cool. Uh, because it's like English. You read this sentence in this fashion. Is the number less than two? Well, because if this is the case, well, give me back n. On the contrary, you just recurse. You do fib n minus one plus fib n minus two. Now, I hope you already understand recursion. If not, I made a video in which I try to street explain being street smart about recursion maybe this can help. In this video, indeed, we are going to talk only about performance. So, is vanilla in my main, I do a loop in which we are going to iterate fib times, fib is just the number of Fibonacci numbers that I want to see in the terminal, and let's run this code. As you can see, as long as the process is running, this is getting slower and slower. At a certain point, it becomes super slow, basically useless, because in real world, if something is low, equals not working, right? We wait, we wait, and now we finished. Terrible performance. The recursive solution is pretty crispy, pretty sleek. Indeed, with only one line, I can get the sequence nailed. But performance-wise, this is a mess. What is going on? So what is the issue here? Well, very simply, we are throwing energy away. We are wasting energy. Look at this animation. We are performing many, many times the same operations. We are not caching anything. Very, very bad. We are doing the same things many, many times. Such a bad algorithm, even though it's very elegant. So second solution, iteration. Iteration performance wise, it's much better, but much less elegant. You agree, right? Here's the algorithm. Basically, I declare three variables, first, second, and temporary. I say that first is equal to zero, and second is equal to one. Of course, these are the first two numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. Then I simply say, if zero is equal to n, what do you do? Well, you simply return first, which is, in this case, zero. On the contrary, you start the iteration. Basically, it's a swapping between these variables. What do I do? Well, I start at index 2 until the index is minor or equal than n. In this case, it's 10,000. Then I say put in the variable temporary the second. So in the first iteration, you're gonna put 1. And then you say second plus equal first. So in the second variable, you do 1 plus 0 in the first iteration. Of course, this is gonna be 1. And then you put in first temporary which was one, right? So as you can see, we moved. Basically, we were at zero, one. Now we are at one, one. And we keep moving on with this swapping of these two variables. A simple iteration, right? Nothing really complicated. So let's run this code and let's check for performance. As you can see, I have 10,000 numbers and this is pretty much instantaneous. With the recursion, we were struggling to reach 45 numbers. Now, never mind the actual overflow. These Fibonacci numbers are bad are wrong because we overflowed the 64 bits but now we are only checking the actual performance so iteration easily wins against recursion with this piece of code we're going to maintain the actual peak performance but we're going to maintain the elegance of recursion you probably know what i'm talking about i'm talking about memoization basically we're going to cache the results we're going to get we are not throwing energies we are not making calculations and throw the value in the bin so basically what I'm doing, I'm creating a cache. What is a cache? Basically, this is an array, right? An array by which the size in this case is gonna be limit the number of Fibonacci numbers that I want to see. In this case, only 10. So we have this array of unassigned int 64, the biggest uh, integer that can be stocked in my system. And very important, this is a static array. 
What does it mean? Well, static means global private. It means that all the fib memo functions can see this variable, like a global variable, but all the external functions cannot see this variable. So it's a global in the sense that all the recursive calls can see this variable, like a global variable, but only this specific function, the fib memo function can see. So global private. Cool, right? So what do I do here? I basically initialize this cache in this way. I'm going to put in the position zero, the value zero, and in position one, the value one. Indeed, the first two numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. After that, I'm going to say put from position two to position limit minus one, in this case, in position nine, a sentinel value, which in this case is the value 42. Why 42? Well, simply because this is not a Fibonacci number, you see? We jump from 34 to 55. So this is simply a value for me to understand that inside the cache, we don't have a Fibonacci value. Indeed, the name of this flag is not a Fibo flag, right? Not a Fibonacci number flag. So I have my array with 0, 1 and all 42s. Then I say, if cache in position n is different from not a Fibo flag, namely if in the cache in position n i don't have 42 what does it mean well it means that the number is a fibonacci one right 100 percent so you're gonna return me that number on the contrary what do you do and this is all the magic you're gonna call fib memo you're gonna recurse you already know very well this piece of code so you're gonna do fib memo n minus one plus fib memo n minus two then pay attention you're gonna assign the value to the position n of the cache so you're gonna stock in the cache the fibonacci value and then you are gonna return that value you can do this piece of code in c so in these few lines of code you get the elegance of recursion and also add a very powerful code it's gonna run pretty fast now we try now let's try for 10,000 elements. What is going to happen? Compile and run, and as you can see, we get instantaneous results. This is dramatically fast. It's basically like iteration. So now in this final test code, I'm gonna check the differences in performance. We have the Fibonacci recursive, which is very bad. Then we have the Fibonacci iterative, which is pretty good, but is not elegant. And then we have the Fibonacci memoized which is elegant and powerful. Now I created this function, which is perf, that is taking as an input a pointer to function. Why is that? Well, because all my functions here have the same signature, the same prototype, right? They give me back an unsigned int 64 and take as an input unsigned int 32. So you will see why this works. So this performance take all these pointers to functions the actual and Fibonacci and the function type. Why is that? Well, here, as you can see, I have an array of pointers to functions. This works because I have a type def at the very top. Here I use fib function thanks to this type def. I don't have to write the actual signature for a pointer to function. Then I do the same, an array of strings with the actual type of the function, right? Recursive, iterative, and memo. And then I simply do a for loop for all the numbers up to limit. And then I call another loop that is going to loop from zero to two. And what is doing is calling the performance function, passing as an input f in position i, so a pointer to function. First of all, is going to be the recursive, iterative, and the memoized one. And then the actual string. Okay, so here is going to pass the type of the actual function. Now you understand this foo type. Inside this performance, I just use get time of the day to track the times past when I call this function. And then I simply print the actual results. Now let's just check the results because that's what we care, not the actual code. So I compile and launch. And as you can see, we start to get the actual results. And as you can see, Fibonacci recursive is the actual bottleneck. On the contrary, Fibonacci iterative and Fibonacci memoized are instantaneous. They go super fast. So let's remove the Fibonacci recursive and let's make a fight between the iterative against the memoized. 
So I just change here the loop. I'm gonna modify this zero to a one. Basically, I'm gonna skip the Fibonacci uh, recursive here, right? Compile and launch and boom, as you can see, we start to go very, very fast, right? We start to move fast like L and we can observe that Fibonacci iterative is uh, over time uh, taking more time, of course, because we increase the number of iterations, right? As the Fibonacci number becomes bigger and bigger, we need more iterations. So as you can see, the final Fibonacci took 255 milliseconds. On the contrary, memoized took zero milliseconds. But why is that? Well, the thing is that we have a cache. So every time the Fibonacci memoized function is called, it has a cache filled with Fibonacci numbers. So every time it's gonna be almost instantaneous to get the result, zero time. On the contrary, the iteration takes a little time more, but we have to benchmark these two functions only with the same input called once, right? I don't want to have a cache. Let's check the performance in that case. So I just comment this loop and we are gonna try only with the number, okay? So compile and launch. And as you can see, we get that the iterative uh, approach took me less time compared to the memoized function in a single match, right? This is true only when uh, uh, the actual cache is empty, right? Because the memoized function has to fill the actual uh, static array. Now, the first time takes this time, right? But if I call again memoized, it's gonna take zero time basically, right? If I call fib memoized with 100,000, this is gonna take nothing because I have all the previous values of the Fibonacci sequence stocked inside this static array. Of course, let me repeat, these values are wrong because we have uh, a very big number. So we have to engineer how to actually print and see those big numbers that overflow the 64 bits. But performance wise, now you understand what is going on. Now, one final method that I want to show you is FibMath. Well, basically we're using a formula, right? Which is the fastest way ever, right? We plug a number and we get an output. Let's try this. So this is the actual code you saw with the formula. What is the problem here? Well, here I'm gonna run the code testing with the Fibonacci iterative method and we'll see what is going on. Okay, let's run the code and what do we get? Well, at the very beginning, we have a very good result, right? Everything is exactly the same. We move on, we move on. And at a certain point, exactly here at FIBO 71, we get a different result. We get here 21 with the iterative approach, but here we get 30, you see? So we have a difference of one between the two functions. And as we are moving up, we get bigger differences. So what is the problem here, my friend? Well, here the problem lies upon the real numbers representation in your computer. But basically in real life, we have no total precision when we talk about real numbers. Try to divide, uh, I don't know, 100 per three. Can you tell me what is the result? Nah, you can. That's the problem. So as long as we do operations bigger and bigger, we get not a correct result. I personally really like for this kind of problem the memoized version. I don't know. It is not perfect because space complexity is not perfect at all, but I really like it. It is sweet. It is sleek. Love it.